The darkest scandal in NBA history took away from us potentially one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Before his death, Len Bias was seen as a generational prospect, a future Hall of Famer, and a man who could have been Michael Jordan's biggest rival. He would have superseded Mike. Mike would have become great, but he had an edge on Mike. He was a better athlete. He was bigger and stronger. He was a slimmer LeBron, but with a jump shot. A huge statement, but these are the words of Olden Polonese, who not only played against both Jordan and Len Bias in college, but also was a number eight pick and 15 year NBA vet. Olden was not the only one who thought this. Standing at six foot eight with a 44 inch vertical leap and the ability to bench at least 300 pounds, Len Bias scared opponents and his dominance left players such as Jay Billis in awe. He, he was Superman in a basketball uniform. I mean, I think it's like being on a, a golf course with Tiger Woods or something, or the time you played against Jordan. Like there's a difference between being a great player and being transcendent and he was in the transcendent category a transcendent talent a slimmer lebron whose death was described by reverend jesse jackson as having the impact of martin luther king jr today we are going to see just how great len bias could have been and dive into what would become basketball's biggest scandal. So what's up, Mike here, and the athletic highlights of Len Bias are absurd. Watch here as he catches a lob and throws down a backwards dunk where his head is literally at the rim. This was not a once in a lifetime event for Len. Bias showed us in college time and time again that his leaping ability was nothing short of ridiculous. It was game changing. At six foot eight, he had the athletic tools to be one of the all time greats as not only could he jump extremely high with again, a 44 inch vertical, but also he played with with both power and grace. He dunked on many people's faces, plowing through opponents on the way to the rim, while also in his senior season, he shot over 54% with 23.2 points per game as a two-time ACC Player of the Year and two-time All-American, which was in itself impressive enough to make us truly think what could have been. If we look at Len's final year in college compared to Jordan's final year in college, we would say Len had the edge stats-wise, and on top of this, his jump shot at the time was seen as both knockdown and impossible to defend against. Against. In his senior season, Len would shoot around 86.5% from the free throw line, proving his potential as a shooter in the NBA, while as you can see in the highlights, Len would use his leaping abilities to rise over defenders and put up shots that no one could contest. And many would compare him as a prospect directly to Michael Jordan. John Sally, a four-time NBA champion who played against Len in the ACC, has said, Lenny is 6'9 and played like Michael. He was the beast. He was the literally gonna save the Celtics. Now the Celtics at the time did not exactly need saving yet. Len was the number two pick of the 1986 draft by the Boston Celtics. However, the 1986 Celtics won their final championship of the Larry Bird era in that year as they went 67 and 15. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank our friends at DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Tournament time is officially here, so fill out your brackets and place your bets on who you think will rise to the top with my partners at DraftKings Sports. Book. Right now, all new customers who bet $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's right, new customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive $150 in bonus bets instantly. Stay in on the action and use your $150 in bonus bets on DraftKings same game parlays for a shot at an even bigger payout. Max reward limits apply and if sports betting is not yet available in your state, do not worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have a shot to win cash prizes. So guys, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code Corzemba and bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That is personally what I'll say, just an incredible deal. That's promo code Corzemba only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Again, thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. And for now, let's get back into the video. They were a juggernaut, and adding a generational prospect would have given them a second leg. The Bad Boy Pistons era very much may have never happened, as back in 1984, Boston had dealt Gerald Henderson to the Sonics for their 1986 first round pick, and that pick became the second pick in the entire draft, the pick that became Len Bias. There he is, Len Bias. 
I'll tell you, this is a great kid. He is the best athlete, in my opinion, in the whole draft. Without Len in 1987, the Celtics would lose in the NBA Finals to the Lakers in six games. And then from 1988 to 1993, in those six seasons, they would win an average of 51 games with one trip to the Eastern Conference Finals and two second round exits. AKA, they were just missing a star to put them over the top. It has been said that Larry Bird, whose career was cut short due to his back injury, could have found a second life himself as Len Bias would have taken the minutes and offensive load that Bird provided for Boston from him if he were on the Celtics roster. In addition to all of this, throughout his time in the NBA, Michael Jordan had older veteran rivals in Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. However, among his peers, he had no equal. The closest Jordan had was Clyde Drexler, another shooting guard who was hyped up as potentially someone who could take Jordan's throne. Drexler himself would claim he was better than Mike at the time, saying, I was bigger, faster, stronger. I could do everything he could except shoot more. The media really made this a thing. Clyde to Glide says we're the two best in the game. Clyde was a threat. You know, I'm not saying he wasn't a threat, but me being compared to him, I uh, took offense to that. Which meant in the 1992 NBA Finals, in game one, Jordan responded with the Shrug game, a game in which he connected on six three-pointers in the first half alone, shrugged in disbelief at his own ability, leaving Clyde in shambles. Len Bias, meanwhile, had already proven in front of our eyes that he was ready to take on Mike as a true rival in that way. This would have only benefited everyone. If Michael Jordan had someone constantly pushing him, we already know him as the greatest of all time. Who knows how much better he could have been. After Jordan's first retirement, when he won his first three championships, he retired saying he had already done all he had set out to accomplish. Flem Bias was there, ready to steal his throne. Well, the NBA could have had their next generation of Bird vs. Magic. And in college, we had already seen the two go head-to-head -head in a game where Len Bias clearly rose to the occasion against Mike. Despite the fact that Maryland was very much overmatched, against the number one ranked North Carolina Tar Heels, Len kept Maryland in the game with 24 points to Mike's 21 as Len proved that he not only was a physical marvel, but that also he had begun to develop a knockdown jumper, making nine of his 11 field goals off of jump shots. Maryland was down one with about two minutes left before the Tar Heels broke this game open, but Len Bias was on the map and he wouldn't stop there. In his junior season, Len would lead Maryland to the Sweet 16 while also taking down future NBA Hall of Famer David Robinson in the process. Robinson would later say, he, Len Bias, was the only guy whose poster I had on my wall. Think of the level of respect you must have for a player who beat you to have his poster on your wall. And after a senior season that saw him finish as a first team All-American and an eventual number two pick for the Boston Celtics, Len Bias's opponents were convinced. I believe he was headed toward Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame uh, status that he would have been had he played in the NBA, a perennial all-star. This is very sadly where the story turns, as Len Bias was such an incredible talent that his death would echo throughout the entire country. I think it was the equivalent, Reese, for my generation of, of the Kennedy assassination. We all remember exactly where we were when we found out that Len Bias had died. But what exactly happened? How did a healthy athlete in his prime, just two days after he was taken as the number two pick in the 1986 draft, Die. The short answer is a cocaine overdose. The long answer is much more complicated. While it has been said that this may have been the first time that Len Bias did cocaine, the dark truth that came out during the court cases that followed his death would reveal from testimony that the night began as one of celebration. After he was drafted number two overall by the Boston Celtics, Bias would tell the media, at Maryland we had a great team, but we were always the dark horse. I'm going to be the top dog now. I'm happy, elated, I can't wait. What else can I say? I'm in the NBA. I dreamed I'd get drafted to be able to play for Boston. That was a dream within a dream. Only this dream would become a nightmare as Len Bias would go back to his dormitory suite with a Celtics jersey and a bag of Reebok shoes, smiling and telling his friends it's time to celebrate. Unfortunately, this celebration would go too far as the night would soon become dark. Again, some have said this was Len's first time using the drug. Some even at the time said he could have been given a drink that was laced with cocaine and because of his inexperience with cocaine, his body could could not handle it. After Len's death though, there was a court case in which Len's teammate Terry Long, who was present at his death, 
tells a very different story. This court case was looking to convict Brian Tribble of supplying the drugs. Tribble was one of four men doing the drugs along with Len and Len's teammates Terry Long and David Gregg. In the court case that followed, Long would take the stand and say, Bias had introduced him to cocaine three years ago when he offered him the drug in a folded dollar bill. He and Bias used cocaine together seven to ten times after that, including once with Tribble and teammate David Craig at Tribble's apartment after a basketball game during the 1986 season. David Craig, another teammate of Len and another person present on the night of his death, testified in court that he had used cocaine four or five times with Bias, and when asked how many times Bias supplied him with the drug, Greg said about three times. On the night of Len's death, Terry said Bias awakened him at about 2 or 2.30 a.m. by knocking on his bedroom door. Bias said, wake the blank up. We're gonna celebrate. The four men, Len, Terry, Greg, and Tribble, continued to pass the mirror and snort cocaine until sometime around 6 a.m. This is when Long said Bias rested on Long's bed for about five minutes. Bias tried to go up and go to the bathroom, but could not because he was all wobbly. Then Bias had a seizure, and it was during the seizure that Len Bias's life would be taken from him, as he would pass away at the hospital after doctors were unable to save him. Whether or not we believe Terry Long is up to the individual here. This is what he said in court though. Brian Tribble would actually be found not guilty of this court case, despite the testimony here as he stated he did not supply the drugs. Although, according to DEA agent Veronica Baker, after the Len Bias case, Tribble really came up in the drug world. Drug dealers thought he was safe. He was a dealer who wouldn't turn. He had people calling from all over the country to make deals. In a separate case just years later, Tribble would be given 10 years in jail. And although all of this is just horrible, there is a light in the darkness to Len Bias's death. For one thing, Reverend Jesse Jackson during Len's funeral would say, God sometimes uses our best people to get our attention. He described Bias's death as one that could wake up America to its drug problem and scare future generations from drug use, showcasing that while Len's death was a tragedy, good could and would come from it from future generations. Lenny was vulnerable, but all of us are, Jackson would say. It takes years to climb a mountain, one step and we face oblivion. We must make his death the breaking point. For those of us who remain, let us work. Let Lenny rest. Len's own mother, facing this tragedy, took this message more than to heart, especially after her other son, Jay Bias, was shot and killed after a described minor incident just a few short years later. Jay Bias would pass away in the same emergency room as Len. Using these horrible experiences, Lenise Bias has proven just how strong of a woman she is, working anti-drug campaigns tirelessly for almost 40 years. She has said Len is bigger in death than in life because his death has brought life to so many, a message to stay away from drugs. She urged all to practice, agape, unconditional love. Since judgment is destructive, instead practice unconditional caring, respect, and worth because no one knows the invisible wounds another carries. Strong words and actions from a mother of two who had her sons ripped from her life. But if there's anything we should take away from this story, it's this. People are not perfect. Many have spoken about how great of a person Len Bias was, with his former coach Lefty Drizil stating, Len was a man of great kindness and love and that God put us on earth to test us, to try us out to see if we can make his team. I have no doubt that Lenny made his team. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything I want to say it's that if you are going through anything like this if you are going through any kind of struggle you can reach out to me personally if you want but also reach out to your family members reach out to the people around you your life is very valuable and also i think we should all practice the words of mrs bias here i think we all should love our neighbor as we love ourselves because we do never know the invisible wounds that another person is carrying so again thank you for watching thank you so much for supporting you're awesome and as always have an awesome day and cue that music if you're still here while the music is cued here are two videos videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.